Hey there. So what do you do when you're laid up with a broken ankle? You make cooking videos. So a couple people have asked me how to make stuffed grape leaves. So I was fortunate enough that my sister is visiting and she brought me some beautiful, beautiful stuffed uh, or grape leaves from my mother's vine that my grandmother planted probably 70 years ago, 1950s, early 1950s. And um, I have my stuffing here. This is um, a non-meat stuffing. You can make stuffed with grape leaves with lamb and tomato. Um, I make the vegetarian kind. So here we have some some rice. Um, I don't know about half and a half of rice. And there's a can of organic chickpeas. And there is dill and mint and parsley and lemon. Kind of all the stuff you'd put into bouli, but no bulgur. Um, rice, um, olive oil, lemon. Um, Smells amazing. Smells like my grandmother's kitchen. So you mix it all together with a little olive oil and lemon and some salt and pepper and uh, some people put cumin. Um, I do sometimes, but I didn't today. And then you take a good, probably a heaping teaspoon because rice is gonna expand. And let me tip this so you can see. Let's see it rolling. Move it back a little bit. So I put it towards the, the end of the dull side of the leaf. And then, you roll it like you would roll um, a cigar. Fold the sides over and over, and then roll it up towards the point. That's your middle point. When you put it in the pan, you're gonna put it so that the end is down, so that's gonna hold it together. But it looks like a little cigar. And I'm probably gonna make 60, 70 of these because I have all this time on my hands, so let me take it shot here and show you what they look like. I do them on the counter and then I put them in the pan. There's a little, I put some lemon slices on the bottom um, and a few leaves just so they don't stick to the bottom of the pan and fall apart. But very easy and then they'll get covered with water and I usually put a little extra lemon on top and maybe some um, extra salt and pepper and then you put a plate on top of them and the plate keeps them from unraveling when the water boils when it starts to simmer um, so most <laughs> Lebanese families have stories about the plate that you use you save this one little plate that goes on top that fits perfectly in your in your pan for grape leaves or dolmas or wadaish depending on where you're from look at these leaves oh my gosh they're so beautiful oh, they're bigger than my hand good job Barb um, and then uh, you bring the water to a boil. You cover them with water. Um, you bring the water to a boil, and then you lower it. You let it simmer, just like you'd cook rice. And you cook it for about 20, 25 minutes. Um, take one out, test it. Make sure the rice is cooked. And like I said, you roll them very loosely because you don't want them to break when the rice expands. So you roll them with a light touch. It's very meditative. This is like, you know, my grandmothers and aunts and Lebanese relatives are all right here in the kitchen with me while I'm rolling these babies. And um, then when they're done, you leave them in the pot. You want them to come almost to room temperature. You don't want to take them out of the pan when they're hot because they'll break. And then you plate them, single layer on a nice, big, beautiful platter, and maybe sprinkle some fresh uh, dill on top. And if there's any left, which there usually isn't here, you can refrigerate them for a few days. Put them in a nice container and if they're good cold. I don't like them hot. They need to be nice and chilled. And uh, they're so much better with fresh leaves than if you buy. You can buy leaves. Um, I don't think I've ever made them with, with canned or jarred leaves because we've always um, picked batches and batches and put them in the freezer. So, but I can't get over how beautiful these leaves are. I mean, they are just perfect. So, anyway, I'll post a picture when they're done. Bye.